Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome to another Warframe Revisited video here on the channel. Now this is number 9 in the series. If you haven't seen any others, make sure to go check out the playlist. Goes without saying, at this point in the storyline, you're going to start getting spoilers. So if you're not at this point as well, be warned, spoilers ahead. So, in the previous two videos, because we split it in half, we did the second dream. After the second dream, technically the next quest would be the War Within. And technically the one we're about to do is supposedly classed as a side quest. Personally, from my personal viewpoint, I class it as a main quest because, technically speaking, it is the end of the old war. <coughs> so, we're going to go in, and we're going to do Octavia's Anthem. Now, as I say, it's a little bit controversial. Most people class this as a side quest, but I don't. If you build the Mandacord, I will reward you with the most essential thing I own. My knowledge. I have data pertaining to the Mandacord's history and function. First, you must find its component parts. Ordis has been informed of their last known location. So as you can see, shrink that down a little. Um, this quest is with Cephalon Suda, and she wants us to collect the Mandacore components. Pretty simple. And I mean, obviously this quest pertains to Octavia, because, well, clues in the name, Octavia's Anthem. Pretty obvious, but it doesn't just refer to that. Now, obviously, if you haven't seen the second dream videos, they are in the playlist, but... To link back to the end of the second dream, your Warframe manages to sort of sit up and prize the broken, well, prize the wall out of its body, tearing it in half, making the broken wall. In doing so, that supposedly kills Hunhao, but he's not entirely dead because, as Lotus Stroke Natar has told us before, his spirit kind of remains in the different parts of him. That's intriguing. The fact that uh, Suda there says about disregarding her tangent and she remembers something before. Well, technically, the Cephalon used to be human, so that be exactly what it's referring to there or not? I've lost track of the actual piece of music. Ah, it's because there's a secret tunnel under the stairs. Never seen that before. Ah. <coughs> that makes a lot of sense. Oh, we have to go up there. But magical piece because of course they're gonna be well hidden. Why are we now going back the way we just came now? We just need to keep following the little blue ball really. It'll lead us to the pieces. The corpus are really annoying me, they won't leave me alone. If we continue following this orb, but I don't even think this orb knows where we're going. I think I've lost the music again. I 
Music, where are you? Real talk, where's the music actually gone? There's got to be a piece around here. Because this was the pl last place I saw the orb. It's got to be in here. Maybe if we do the hack, it will show it to us. Don't you love being able to find the music? We will be back. We have found the music. We are following the music. <laughs> I will get this piece. And we will do it all in the night. Oh, hello. We will do it all in the name of Suda. Music is nice and peaceful to listen to, but it's also very annoying when you can't find the orb. <laughs> Where's the orb gone? Ah, you're going that way. The orb needs to stop going through walls. It's very hard to follow the orb and follow the sound when it keeps going directly through solid walls. Music, take me to the piece. Aha, you have led me to the piece. Now we can extract. We can finally extract. Ah! My word, was that a difficult thing to do? That should not have been as hard as it was. Well, now, you'd normally extract and you'd go and build the manticord, which takes half an hour, some credits, a little bit of work in your foundry, but we don't have to do that because we have this wonderful joy that is the fact that we've already built it. So, 
why build it again when you've already built it? Hmm. So, if we just extract now, get back to the orbiter, we'll probably have messages coming through from Suda. So now, next up, find the first song fragment. So we've got to go to Uranus. So if we head to Uranus, we're going to go find the first song fragment on Uranus. And um, then we can use that in the Mandacord. You can use that in the Mandacord for Octavia's Anthem. So this is the first piece of the Anthem itself. So, if we just go, we just go straight into the uh, Grenier Sea Lab on Uranus, and uh, Intriguing. I remember these caves. we need to explore deeper according to Suda, so let's go underground, deep into the heart of Uranus. <laughs> One good thing about um, replaying all these quests and coming back to planets like Uranus and Earth and stuff like that is you actually get a lot of resources that we're going to need for the new war, particularly plastids, polymer bundles, oxium and neurodes. They're four resources that I've really struggled to get. So getting some extras from these planets and from these quests is actually quite useful. We're still going to go down, we're not deep enough. My word. I swear if we have to go any deeper. Oh my god, we actually now have a submersible bit. So we've got to swim. <clears throat> round and round we go underwater. through the mystical oceans of Uranus. We've almost found that first song fragment. <laughs> oh no, we've been pulled over by a... I don't even know what I was. I don't care either. We killed it. Oh, this is interesting. I recognize that object. The hydraulis. An oral can air instrument that produced its sound from water. If I had a human oh, no. construct an ironic witticism regarding its submerged state. How would Oh no, I forgot this. It's damaged, but I wonder if So we've now got to actually start. We've got to use the hydraulics. Strange. I have no archival entry. To actually start playing the tune. But I know this. It is a piece of Octavia's anthem. Could this data be compatible? It's not hard, it's not too hard. It tells you around the top, so as long as we just match the pattern correctly, which we have done. I remember. I love what oh. Suda's losing it, guys. She is going crazy. Although, I've got to admit, I like what she said when we first found the Hydralis then. She was like, if I had a humour precept, I would make a, a witty uh, comment about its uh, submerged state. And you know what? It's actually quite ironic, really, isn't it? The fact that a instrument that plays sound from water is found deep underwater. That is quite ironic. I've never even noticed that before. 
and so we extract and as i was saying earlier we get a lot of useful resources out of this 300 plasters 532 polymer bundles i mean very useful to build new weapons and new warframes ready for the new war and um it's coming now i mean got about a week and a half until we uh have the dev stream which should tell us the actual release date of the new war and hopefully by which time i will have released all of these videos but fingers crossed So harsh. I don't like him. Don't be such a selfish. Yasuda is in danger. Our precepts demand that we help her. No, Oidus. We are creatures of light and memory, but creatures nonetheless. <laughs> Whatever Bikrot is affecting Suda could cross the weave. And if Samaris is so rude. It's not a glitch, Ordis. Oh no, no, that's a spoiler, that's a spoiler. You did not hear anyone say, hey kiddo, that was all in your head. Nothing happened. Nothing happened. Nothing happened. So. Let's head to Lua, on, or the moon, or whatever the hell you want to call it. I mean, I've always known of it as Luna, which is why I hate in this game the fact that it's just called Lua. It, it lost its N. Why did they take its N? It makes no sense. <laughs> but we're going to go to Lua to go and find the second song fragment. And then we get to play a little bit more music. And who doesn't love music? That's why I like this quest. It's musical. Oh my god, could you imagine that? Warframe the musical. That needs to happen. <laughs> Well, Suda's already losing it. Lua, why did we come here? I, I have asked you this already. Mm. This was right. This corruption is not benign. I am vanishing. <sighs> so yeah. Suda's completely losing her marbles, like, she's asking this question she's already asked, and yeah, she's the one that sent us here! Suda, wake up! Why is it so quiet here on Lua? There's literally nothing, it's just silence. Although... Ah! Ah! There's neurodes, I want the neurodes, but there's... The, 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 There we go, that's what I was saying about earlier in this video. This quest does link to the second dream, because, well, somehow, what more can I say? Children, fight the anthem. Operator, what's happening? 
happening to her? What's happening, Gordis? Is she's being taken over by Han? How the small sentiards? The rabble sentiards. Oh my god, there's more sentience. Okay, con the conculus, the conculus are dead. The Baz Basmu is actually really good at killing these things. Mindless appliances. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh, that's nice. oh, this I actually love you. Right. So we've now got the next part of the anthem to build. Should be quite simple as long as we can follow a pattern. Like, we're not incompetent, it's really quite easy. Really quite easy to follow the pattern. That song. I the last fragment. Ordis, tell your operator. I am sorry. I am so sorry. I keep forgetting for long. It's happening again. Another Cephalon made now as we prepare. The others I will divide and destroy. Your terror will be dead blind. Pun how I really hate you. Answer me. Operator, you better get out of there. Okay, now we've just got to extract, but there's going to be sentience left, right, and centre. Oh my god. Oh my god! Oh my god! There's like 20 battleists and 50,000 conculists. Hmm. Is this a Lua Challenge Room? I found a Lua Challenge Room, I think. But we haven't even got the chance to be able to do it! Oh my days! How the hell do we get up there? If we go round and up here, and then through here. God, I think we're free. Oh, no, 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 no. No, no. No, no. Oh, my God, there's another one. There we go, this is how we get away. I find it ironic that whilst we're doing this quest, we're getting standing with Cephalon Suda herself. I find that quite ironic. The fact that we're playing a quest for Suda. Whilst gaining standing for Suda. That's ironic. The sentient has infiltrated Suda's mind. We must isolate and destroy her immediately before she corrupts the Cephalon we <coughs> But she told me where the final part of the song is. Did you see how the song affects? It made her remember. It could be the parity she needs to recover herself from Hanhao. Her memories are consumed. That is all she is. All she was. Sever the weave and avoid this corruption ourselves. That is our only choice. And when he comes for you and your precious sanctuary, 
Will you want us to look the other way? To the point with you. Operator, we must go. Let Simaris worry about himself. Oh my god, Ordis, I actually love you. Fighting back against Samaris just like you all should. Because I hate Samaris. So, as the wise Corpus once said, it's into the void. But here we will, f um, we have to harness the power of the Orican Tower um, with the song itself now. So this is quite a simple thing to do, but... Operators, the Hydrolis is here somewhere. I will attempt to pinpoint its location. There! Rebuilding the Anthem is our only hope of restoring Suda. The music makes her remember. Wait, sentience in the void? Impossible! Unless... So yeah, uh, even though we're in the void where sentients pretty much can't access, uh, there are sentients here, but as you can see, they said decaying battleists and decaying conquerors. That's because they are technically dying to the power of the void, but because of Hunhau's infiltration in Suda's datascape, it's kind of protecting them in a way. So if we lock the room, kill out any sentience in here, <coughs> then we've just got to play the last piece of the anthem itself. Should be simple enough to do. There we go, I think we've got it now. Suda? Suda? Can you hear us? She is gone. Will you join her? You puerile. Damn! Hun Hao is also rude. Why is everyone being rude to poor Ordis? Ordis deserves better. Right, if we amplify the hydraulics, then hopefully Suda will be able to hear it. But of course, we're going to have sentience trying to stop us. You know, this is the only quest where you can actually scan these types of sentience. The decaying battleists and the decaying conquerors are exclusive to this quest. So if you want to scan those for the codex and you haven't already, you will need to replay this quest if you want them. So just thought I'd take this opportunity to point that out. <coughs> Simple enough to kill. So now we've amplified, now that we've amplified the Hydraulus, we can uh, head back there, replay the whole song now. So, Hun Hao's now trying to corrupt Ordis, but we can hopefully prevent that by amplifying the Hydraulus a second time to make the tune even more powerful, to break through 
One has control over not just Audis but Suda as well at this point. So if we amplify it, again we are going to be attacked by sentience, but that's to be expected at this point. Oh my god, I totally forgot. This quest also gives us the lore behind Ordis, because Ordis wasn't always a Cephalon, he was a human. Technically, he was a Dax warrior, as Hunhao just stated. He was Orden Karis. Um, his, name is, uh, his nickname is the Beast of the Bones, and he was a Dax warrior. Who, as far as I know, I, if I remember correctly, he was punished and turned into a Cephalon. Which is, this is the first time we actually hear anything about that. So... Kinda of thanks to Hunhao, we learn a little bit more about all this, so we have that to thank him for, I guess. That's it. The secondary amplifier is engaged. Such a beautiful salon. Keep those reactors alive, operator. I'm going to open a direct link to Suda. Suda, talk to us. Try to remember. Ordis, stay alive. Operator, I am sorry. I have to help her. If I can join her... Ordis is trying to break through to Suda, but... It's probably not a good idea. Oh, Ordis, what did you do? So if we just head to extraction in the most silent way possible. <coughs> Again, even though Suda's corrupted, we got some more standing for her. I do find that ironic, that's quite funny. So... If we extract now... I think we're heading into the last mission in this quest line now. But this mission takes... A fair bit longer. So now we're going to go head to the Vesper Relay, where we're going to go and speak to um, Cephalon Samaris. And yeah, I was correct, this is going to take us into the final mission of this questline. But, as I stated, this one takes a little bit longer, but there's a lot of storyline throughout it, so I'm not going to skip any bits, you're just going to get it straight up. Because if I was to skip any of it, you might miss part of the story. And then things wouldn't make as much sense. I mean, this is a confusing storyline as it is. Warframe has quite a confusing lore if you miss bits of it, so... Hmm. So if we head straight down to Cephalon Samaris and his sanctuary... There's a member of our clan here. <laughs> Zendelix from the Dragon Veil. Hmm. So, we need to speak to Samaris about Suda's datascape. Cephalots can manifest an alternate reality of information, training simulations, archives. Even a grandiose archival of living creatures is possible, as is the case with Sanctuary. You're not going after Ordis, are you? You'd be risking annihilation with that sentient entangled there. 
Now we get to choose Yes I Am Help Me or Hunhau's Intention. I want to find out Hunhau's Intention. Let's go for I it. Seek to preserve. Hunhau seeks only to destroy. Perhaps Cephalon Suda was right after all. Somehow this music threatens Hunhau. Perhaps the Tenno used it subversively in the past to coordinate their efforts. Hunhau is too strong. I will not risk myself in my sanctuary. I entry the suit is data scape. But if you are foolish enough, I will help you make the journey for Ordis. Send me in, Samaris. Fine, Hunter, as you wish. I will join you to the weave and transmit you and the Mandacord to whatever has become of Suda Hanau. You will be on your own in a strange, abstract place. I can handle that, Samaris. Send me in. We have some Cephalon to save. Oh, I forgot. You actually get to. You actually can see Hunhau here. You can see like his outline. He is massive. So. If you don't understand how this bit works, there's notes that we have to touch. The white ones we have to land on to play them. The red ones are corrupted notes that we need to clear. As the beam sweeps around from the centre, it will play any notes that have been hit. We need to remove the corrupt notes and play the correct notes. And we will need to do this three times for the three different song fragments. Quite a simple quest, but quite difficult under pressure. And as you can see, I keep flying over some notes as well. So. Because obviously if I hit the wrong thing, I'll add an extra corrupted note and we don't want that at all. So, we're going round slowly, we're slowly but surely converting the white ones to blue, which are the correct notes that we are playing. And we're slowly but surely removing those red corrupted notes, but honestly this takes time. And it honestly can take a sharp mind, because if you miss a note or if you fall off, that's when you're going to then make a mistake and you're going to have to go around all again. <coughs> just to find the ones that you've missed, or the extra note that you accidentally played, or the note that you removed, or something. But, whilst we're into the state escape as well, and as we're starting to play the correct notes, you'll start hearing them playing as the beam goes round. As the beam sweeps over each note, it plays it. Just gotta make sure plays the right ones. So as you can see we're already starting to break through to Suda. But it's only gonna get harder from here. So that there, obviously you wouldn't know it at the time, but Hunhau saying, do you remember it, the beat of the Naga drum, that is referring to the downfall of the Orican Empire, of which obviously the Tenno played a huge part of that. Yeah, the, the Tenno actually are technically responsible for the downfall of the Orican Empire. So hopefully we've got the first sweep through going correctly. Wait, it's not complete. We've got all the notes set up. 
What have we missed? There's a corrupted note somewhere. But yeah, so the or the uh, beat of the Naga drum refers to what was first mentioned in the second dream about how the stalker the stalker hates the Tenno for the downfall of the Orican Empire because the drums beat and um, basically the Tenno went round. It was part of the old war, and basically the Tenno didn't just kill all of the um, sentience at the time and push back the sentience. They also, technically speaking, did cause the destruction of the Oregon Empire. And I think we have found the note that we missed. <coughs> so I think we've got the first layer correct. The drums, the beat, it reminds me of our uh, tear them up. There we go. So we've got them correct. So the notes are now blasting at Hunhau. The music is attacking the date escape. So if you look back now, we're on the second part. Now if you look around, the notes from the first part are still there. So you'll still be able to hear the drums, but we've now got the second part, which is five notes per thing now. So if we go around slowly, making sure that we try not to miss any notes this time. We also have to be careful because obviously Hun Hao knows we're here, so he's not going to be happy with us. And as you can see as well, he does spawn in Eradicists to try and stop us from playing the anthem. But fingers crossed we can carefully make our way through the notes, destroying the Eradicists that attack us. We click the right notes and remove any corrupted ones. Shouldn't be too hard, he says. <coughs> no, 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 we've fallen. We have fallen. That's going to set us back. It's going to be really annoying. So as you'll be hearing as the beam now sweeps around, we are actually now getting all of the uh, new notes that we've also added, all of these blue notes. So as we slowly add all of our blue notes to it, So obviously we've still got like the the drum from the first layer, but now we're also adding in the actual music itself. The eradicists are trying to slow us down, but we are slowly but surely making our way through them. Okay, that's actually kind of dark, but if you think about it, technically speaking, right there, in saying that, Hun Hao has literally just referenced the new war. In the beat of the Naga drums, did we end the war or merely set the stage for the next? He's referring to the new war in a way there. So when we fall, when we fell, we respawned in a different area. So we're just going to go around and find whatever notes we've missed now from where we fall, uh, from where we fell down. And also, obviously, any eradicists that spawn, we've got to take them out as well. There's a few notes that we missed where we fell down. So if we go get them, then we've almost completed the second stage. So 
So we've nearly got every note in here now. <coughs> <coughs> Just got a few corrupt ones that we don't need. You have indeed, Ordis. You have joined the operator in battle. You're here now. So we've saved Ordis, pretty much. And the music will now start bombarding H Suda Hunhao again. So, that's stage two done. Now, for the hardest one. Stage three. All right. And the music beams are going to sweep a lot more frequently. Because obviously we're closer to the centre, so it's not going to take as long for it to get around. Mm -hmm. There's an awful lot of eradicists spawning, but... Ordis is actually helping us by destroying some of the eradicists for us. We haven't lost you yet, Ordis. So now we have um, Samaris and his sanctuary creatures here to help us against the Eradicists as well. Which will hopefully allow us to uh, then go and um, play the notes and destroy all the corrupt ones. Slowly but surely, we're making our way through it. We're about halfway around this last stage, but... It's whether or not we've played them correctly, is the question. And it's all about trying to make sure as well that we've not missed the corrupted note. Because obviously, the actual background of the datascape itself is sort of red, so it can be hard to see the corrupted note sometimes. But we are slowly getting there now. Ah... Uh, if we accidentally touch a note as well, we do spawn our own corrupted note, but those can be removed obviously quite easily. We're almost there now. There's just a few more eradicists. A few more notes and a few more corrupted notes. We're almost, <laughs> <coughs> almost there. <laughs> These should be the last few notes. As you can see, the music is attacking Hun Hao, and as you can actually see, each note that hits him, his health does decrease.
And that actually does kill Hun Hao once and for all. So this is where normally Suda would then give you the Octavia Blueprint, obviously. I've already had the Octavia Blueprint, but um, so I can't be giving it again. But yeah, this is where Suda would normally give that to you. And um, all in all, you have killed Hun Hao once and for all at this point. Unless he returns in the new war. Which, who knows, might happen. But with that in mind, guys... That was Octavia's anthem. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you found it informative, enjoyable, and fun to watch. And I'll see you all tomorrow for the next one.